response. We have estimated a regression model. It is useful to always go and evaluate. Well, we have a set of residuals, which is defined as the usual YT minus YT fitted, so all in sample residuals. And once you include an intercept in your model in general, um, the, your residuals will have these very useful properties. The first useful property is that the sum of your residuals will always equal to zero and that their covariance or the orthogonal to each of the um, predictors you include in the model. Now, although they have these useful properties, it is always um, wise to go and check these residuals against the assumptions that we made for the errors of the model. Just to remind you, the assumptions we made are that um, your errors have mean zero and are correlated, um, and the general and the additional assumption that they're normally distributed, which is useful for prediction intervals. Um, and also that our errors are correlated with each of the uh, of the regressors. Now we can um, have a look at at the a time plot or an ACF plot and a histogram all together in one using the GGTS residuals function, and that will um, tell us about the uncorrelated part and the normally distributed part. Um, we know that our residuals have mean zero and uncorrelated, but it is always useful to check whether there's some other properties which we've missed. For example, um, it is also always useful to um, plot your residuals against the predictors and check for any non-linearity or non-linear relationships that you may not have included. So you may need to do some transformation um, or include some non-linear uh, function of your predictor in there. Um, it is useful to check against the fitted values and that usually if you see a pattern there is usually one of heteroscedasticity or heteroscedastic pattern. So again you may need to do a transformation uh, to actually um, uh, account for that. And it's also useful to um, print your residuals against your predictors which um, may not have been included in the model uh, which is um, something that you may explore and if you see a pattern then that means that that predictor will be useful um, to be included in the model and it should be included in the model. Um, so if you look at this plot we expect to see some um, non-systematic patterns or some horizontal band with no, um, no uh, patterns in it, curvature or increasing spread. Um, I've done this hand-drawn um, diagram, which will help us think a little bit about what we may see. So um, the orange uh, plots uh, show plotting our residuals against uh, predictors. And I guess these hold for both cross-sectional data, which we don't look at this book, but also time series data. The green bits are plotting the residuals against time and they only hold for time series data. So what we want to see is if I'm plotting the residuals against uh, any predictor, I want to see a random pattern. I don't want to see any systematic patterns there. Um, so these are well-behaved residuals. So in these plots, we want to see no patterns. No patterns is a good thing. Um, if I plotted my residuals against time, uh, this is what you know, a random, uh, a white noise process would look like uh, hand-drawn, let's say. If I plotted my residuals against uh, some predictor and I find some nonlinear relationship, then I need to do something and deal with it. So if I see some pattern like this, then um, I'm thinking about nonlinear relationships. Again, if I plot the residuals against time um, and I see something like this, again, I'm thinking about some nonlinear relationship. If I plot my residuals against um, a variable and any predictor and I see an increasing pattern in variance, then I'm thinking about heteroscedasticity. I might need to take a transformation. If I plot my residuals against time and I see again that type of pattern, then I'm again I'm thinking about heteroscedasticity. Um, exclusive to time series data is if I plot my residuals against time and I see some patterns such as serial correlation where my residuals hang above the axis or below the axis um, as if they are not white noise, as if there's some structure left over. Of course, this will be shown in the ACF plot that we're going to look at uh, when we look at the GGTS residual um, uh, function. So let's return to our example, the US consumption uh, consumption expenditure, and let's have a look at the 
GGTS residuals plot. So here's a time series of my residuals that look fairly um, white noisy. Uh, the ACF also shows there's, there's one significant spike there at lag seven. Remember, this is quarterly data. I'm not sure what happens every seven quarters. I guess um, remember that you know you got a five percent probability of a type one error, so we'll um, we'll just uh, ignore that spike. Um, the histogram shows the distribution of the residuals. They look fairly normal, and as with other sections of the book, we're not going to do anything more about testing about normality. Plotting the residuals against each of the predictors here, we see fairly random patterns. There's no systematic sort of heteroscedasticity or nonlinear uh, patterns that we may see. And also plotting, plotting the residuals against the fitted values. Again, it's a, we see a non-systematic uh, pattern or just a random uh, spread of points. So the residuals in this example are fairly well behaved.